Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Bucks County Cabaret, the premier nightclub of Bucks County. Simply the best room in Bucks for music and entertainment, featuring the area's finest performers, great food in a supper club atmosphere, and the most eclectic variety of cabaret shows in Cabaret Town, New Hope, Pennsylvania. But today we have a special treat for you. Sorry, Rob, but we're replacing you today with my lovely wife and co-producer at the Bucks County Cabaret, the beautiful <laughs> Jennifer Orr. Hello, Jennifer. Hello, and I just want to say, Rob, we did not fire you. <laughs> I would never replace we're, we're you. We're <laughs> just a little partial here to Jennifer because she does all the work <laughs> at the cabaret, which is, of course, located at the Roadway Inn and Suites in New Hope, PA, and it's one of the, actually we'll say the premiere, the finest place to listen to Absolutely. music and performers up close. Absolutely. What are some of your favorite shows so far, honey? Oh, God. There's, it's such a long list because when we we'll open... make it click quickly. We have, quick, <laughs> quick, we have a lot of people on the radio well, here. Well, all of our all of our reviews have been phenomenal. We've had, we've been so fortunate to have so many wonderful performers and to pinpoint out certain people, if I must do that, I will definitely have to say Avi Wisnio is definitely one of them. He does our our monthly uh, residency uh, here at the Cabaret. Uh, Bart Chateau, back in June, was did a two-nighter and was absolutely phenomenal. And what are you look, looking forward in the future coming up soon? Uh, we got so much coming up. We're just jam-packed. Um, I have to say some of my favorites is we're going to be going a little country very soon. With uh, We got, uh, in September, we have... Uh, Patsy Klein, uh, Susie G, doing her Patsy Klein tribute on September 16th. And the following weekend is Molasses Creek from the home uh, Prairie Home Companion. I'm really looking forward to that. So awesome stuff coming up. And we have a very special show for you today. We have a long segment with Chaslin Sweetwood and Bob Egan. Now, we've talked about the history of the cabaret in our first couple shows and how how the room came into being and how Bob Egan was the one who designed it yes, after Odette's and the Flood and all that stuff. Well, well, today we gonna, we're going to hear from Bob Egan himself, and he's going to elaborate on the whole history of the cabaret scene and how it started in New Hope. Uh, so this is a, this is a great show. Uh, let's go. Let's go right to our location where we have Chaslin. And Bob Egan being interviewed by our crack team from Janice Productions. That's that's a John Bell and our interviewer and another co-producer at the Bucks County Cabaret, Megan Hill. Megan Hill. Here Goodbye. they are. Hi, Megan. Good oh, to see you. Good to see you. Let me start with you. You're a Bucks County native and a fellow Archbishop Wood alumni. Go Vikings! <laughs> And uh, many people would say that you created the cabaret venue in this area. What inspired you and how did you accomplish it? Back in 19, early 1981, one of my customers, uh, it turned out, lived part-time in New York. And he, in a conversation, we realized I had never been to New York and never been to a cabaret or a piano bar in New York. And so he took me and a, a singer friend of mine, Anita Donovan, he took us out to New York and showed us the whole New York cabaret life and all the piano bars. And I was fascinated by it, just totally fascinated by it, to the point where we were going up every week. Of course, cover charges were low then. And the nice thing about hanging out with Richard is he picked up the tab. <laughs> As we were poor, starving awesome. artists. Yes. But it was. But he really changed my life in that because we went up often, and we stayed at his apartment in um, Chelsea. And I was fascinated by this. And after years of this, I kept thinking, isn't it strange that there's, you know, I, you have to go to New York for this? Or at one point you had to go to Philadelphia, but the cabaret that was in Philadelphia, there was a. Uh, it only was like at two the Warwick, seasons. I think. Yeah. No, it was before that. Oh. It was at. Um, I don't even remember the name of the place. Equus. It was at a bar called Equus. They were doing a cabaret series. I think they did like two years. And then they never did it again. And I thought, so, the, you can't tell me there aren't enough people around New Hope area that love this the way I do, that would love it brought to them, mm -hmm. as opposed to having to go to New York all yep. the time. Yep. 
And that's how the thing started at Odette's. Ah, so talk to me about Odette's. Well, I started at Odette's in 1985 when friends of mine bought it. And uh, then we immediately started the piano bar and changed the format there because they used to have, just have a jazz trio. But we changed, I changed it to a piano bar format. And about a year into it, I was working with a singer, and she, uh, Courtney Day was her name, and we were working on a show that we were going to take to New York and hopefully do it like Don't Tell Mamas, which mm-hmm. had only been open a couple years at that point. Right. And we had been rehearsing it and rehearsing it. And then I had this idea of taking the piano from the bar, rolling it into the next room, right. which Odette had called the theater room, even though it wasn't a theater, and she never did theater there. But she called us the theater room because she said it looked like there should... It was a, I don't know why. That it her, should be a theater. Her son, Roger, told me how she called it the theater room, but I don't remember the, 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 the reason behind it. So we took the piano on a Sunday night. We rolled it into the other room. We had advertised that she was going to be appearing there. We sold out in three days, mm-hmm. and the rest was history. Like By the time we did the show, the fir- I remember the first night in uh, 1987, almost 29 years ago, I announced that this was going to be uh, the first of a series. Excellent. And then uh, we st- I started to get everyone that I had seen. and be- I Literally, I had to beg them. <laughs> I had to offer them to stay at my house. I would cook them dinner, which I don't do uh, very well. <laughs> and I did everything I could to get them to come. And uh, it was a hard first. It was a really hard first two years because I had to go through some agents and offer minimums. And sometimes nobody, not many people came. We didn't have the Internet then and the right, social right. media. So everything you did, you had to make postcards up. Lick the stamps, and it was, it was and, you, and you didn't have a mailing list. You know, right. you didn't have mailing list yet, so it was really hard. And then Margaret Whiting came and appeared, and there's a long story how I got to meet her, and that just changed everything. She went back to New York, and she told everybody, "You've got to come out here. This is the perfect room to open up your show." Before you break it in at Rainbow and Stars or the Algonquin or the Carlisle. So this was like a, a, an opportunity for the artist to out of try town out their material. Out of town tryouts, right. an hour and a half from the city. Right. And the phone never stopped. I mean, literally, like, I can't believe the people that I got within the first couple of years. Almost blatantly. like It was like she went home and put out a wire. So... Uh, it just took off, but it was it was a lot of work in the beginning. It was really, really, really hard, and it was it was what I'm saying. It was a lot of work even to the end. Right. The last five years were like my favorite, were magic because the room had. I felt like it finally arrived after 19 years. I would say the last five years, just I could bring in an, an unknown act that was wonderful. And no one, of course, down here ever heard of them. And I'd walk in, and we were sold out. That right. was the amazing thing. Yeah. Because people wanted to come see whatever was going to be there. They just knew that it was going to be... We had a good reputation. And at this point, we had uh, people like uh, Rosalind Kine had performed there, uh, Anne Hampton Calloway, Liz Calloway, uh, Sam Harris, uh, uh, Carol Lawrence. I mean, the, the Andrew list was McCardle. long. Maureen, Andrew McArdle, Maureen McGovern... So when you start to put all those big names into it, it just, it had a lot of clout. You know, Mm -hmm. it sort of validated us. Excellent, excellent. Uh, Yes, well, we all know what happened to the poor old Odette. Yeah, there were, unfortunately, there were three floods in 20 months' time, and the third one was the one where the owners just said enough. And I can't can't blame them, too. Right, I know they were talking about trying different renovations to... Raise what, it was up, ne- but- what was neat about Odette's was that because we had the perfect marriage, I always call it the perfect marriage of having the piano bar in one room and the cabaret in the other. And, of course, every cabaret I went to in New York was like that. There was a piano bar downstairs, like an 88s, and then there was the cabaret upstairs. Don't right. tell Mama had the piano bar in the front and the cabaret in the back. They were like a perfect marriage. Right. So by having the piano bar, everyone that came in the door could do something. Yes. You could come in. Yes having never stood up and sang in front of people, and you could sing. Well, that was the nice idea of it, the the piano bar. Uh, Joan Bradley took me there years. Oh, is that who brought you there? That's who brought me there originally, was Joan Bradley. The last of the Red Hot Mamas. Oh, yes. We were performing together uh, in Society Hill in a show, and uh, she 
talked me into going with her, and I went. And of course, she sings in the key of loud, just like me. And <laughs> she was louder. <laughs> oh, she, yeah, well, that is true. But she brought me in there, and I saw all these people sitting around the piano, and I'm like, wow, this is amazing. And I'm thinking, well, I can't sing. I can't sing like these people. I can't sing. And then I, I can't remember if it was you. It might have been Andy Prescott. It might have been George Sinclair. It would be one that. of the three of us. One of the three of you much held court uh, said, you've got to hear her sing. And it was like, oh, great. Nothing like being put on the spot. But I sang and I got up there as often as I could. And sure, I did several of your showcases up there with Joe Flanagan playing for me. That, right. That's right. That's why I've never been to your studio to rehearse because Joe was always playing for me. That's right. I didn't have to play for you, so you were never here. That's right. That's right. But this is a wonderful space that yeah, you Yeah, this, this was in a, a garage. Mm -hmm. And I convert it, part of it, into an office. And then years later, I made this part a rehearsal space, which mm -hmm. is soundproof to the other sides. Mm -hmm. And then the other side is all storage for speakers and lights and sound and stuff. Mm -hmm. But what I was going to say about Odette, the Odette's was that the perfect marriage was that we had the piano bar where anybody that walked in the door could sing along, mm -hmm. where somebody like you that could sing would get the nerve to get up and sing and could start getting stage experience by singing in front of people by standing up at the piano. And then when I started the showcases on Monday nights, it gave eight, I think of my format then was eight Usually people. Usually it was eight people, yes. It gave eight people the opportunity to sing on the stage, and they only had to sing two songs, and it gave them the, the, ne the nice bridge to be able to get their way up to doing their own show. Mm -hmm. And I always talk about, to this day, I always, I'll probably always talk about Gene Cavanaugh, because Gene was, Gene was like my poster child. He, he started singing along with everyone, then he got up and started singing solos at Odette's. Next thing you know, he was doing the showcases, and then he, did a, he would do his shows on Wednesday and Thursday nights, because if, you know, if you were just starting out, you didn't get the Friday and Saturday featured right. spot. But, but he got so good that... We were giving him a weekend, and he would fill the room Friday and Saturday. And my my whole thing about having to get the Friday and Saturday night spot, it was you had to be good enough where if a reviewer came and surprised us and came to do a review, right. I would not be embarrassed. Like right. I would feel like... You had your best talent on I had, stage. I had someone that represented the, the brand that we were trying to do, which was a quality entertainment. I mean, mm -hmm. if, they, if they came on a Wednesday night, they might know it was somebody's debut show that mm -hmm. never sang in front of public before. Mm -hmm. So that's why this room is filled with their friends and families, because... We're not, we don't want to be reviewed. We're just trying to get our, you know, it's like a disclaimer, so to speak. Right, right. But there has to be the steps. And that's what at Odette's was so perfect, is that we had all the steps. Well, in our uh, first few radio programs, we, uh, well, Tom, talked about the history of the Bucks County Cabaret. Now, obviously, we know Odette's flooded, uh, wasn't going to reopen, so you started looking around for another space. That was kind of humorous at first because when Odette's flooded and closed, um, well, at first we were immediately invited to take all our shows to the Stockton Inn, which was very sweet and very nice. But I knew that it could not be our permanent home because I wanted somewhere where we could build the lights and sound in and really have it a dedicated space. Mm -hmm. And some other restaurants in town had invited me to come. And I would go there, and I'd look at the room, and I'm like, we can seat, what, 29 people in here. This is going to be a, <laughs> Ooh, yeah, this is gonna be a real, this is not going to work. And it was really sweet because a lot of people wanted it. But then the owner of the hotel, which at the time was called the New Hope Inn. Inn. It wasn't the Best Western. It wasn't the Holiday Inn. It was the New Hope Inn. And he invited me to come over. And... I looked at this god-awful space. It was just hideous. I mean, the, the furniture that was in it, the carpet, everything about it. And I had this idea of cutting the room down, putting a wall here, and sectioning this back room off to create a special room. Mm -hmm. And what was neat about designing that space was that we were... My friend Devin Neubauer, who was one of my singers, helped me in, in planning this and designing it. I mean, it was, a lot of it was my ideas, and then he had brought in a lot more ideas, and then he helped do the blueprint on it. As we tried to create a room that solved 
all the issues that I learned from 19 years at Odette's. Right, right. And the first issue... Sight lines. <laughs> yeah, sight lines. I mean, there's only so much you can do when you've got two supporting beams in the middle of the room. Right. <laughs> but the real important thing, and the, the thing I love about that room the most, was that Odette's, as you know, we only sat 65 people. Right. It was tiny. Odette's was the size of most people I know's great room in right. their big houses. Right. Yet, whoever sat in the last table gave me the evil eye mm. most of the time because they got the last table. And mm-hmm. I'm thinking, but you're like, the, you're only five tables from the stage. Right, right. So it's that back of the room mentality. So what I wanted to do when we created this room is I always wanted banquettes at Odette's, mm-hmm. but they wouldn't let me do so I wanted to create banquettes because banquettes are cool. Mm-hmm. And banquettes are the furthest seats away, but what were the first seats that always sold out? The banquettes. That's it. So now the back of the room syndrome is done because people want those seats right. because you can see over everyone else and you feel like you're in special seats. Well, the last show that we did at the Bucks County Cabaret, uh, we had a couple of walk-ins. And so Tom seated them at one of the front tables, and they were like, uh, can we go to the banquettes? And that's what they did. They sat up there and reveled in People love the, the banquettes. View. And then the back of the room, we had high tops. And the, the smokers loved the high tops because they were right near the door. Right. So you could see the show, and if you just can't make it an hour without a cigarette, you could slip out the back. No one even know you're missing. You could go have a drink and a cigarette and come back, come back for the encore. The encore. So one of the other special things about the room that, uh, I mean, Devin and I were, we were working on this. We, were, we spent so much time and we were so excited about doing it was that we, like, for example, the ceiling tiles. We, that I learned so much about acoustical tiles because some, someone had said, oh, you can paint the tiles black. And I found out you can't paint the tiles black. You have to order special black acoustic tiles that are already come in that color. So we had gone to great lengths to find these tiles to have them shipped in to create the perfect acoustical um, ceiling on this, too. And um, so that was the interesting thing about that is you can have a band in the room. You can have a four-piece band or five-piece band accompanying somebody, and the sound person can control it right so you're not – no one in the room is being blown away. It's not bouncing off of everything. See, now so, I never realized that. And the stage, we even when we built the stage, we padded it underneath with there's extra foam so that you don't hear the footsteps when you walk across the stage. Oh, my God. Um, and a lot of, there are a lot of little details that went into it. So, and we pl- carefully planned out the tables for all different configurations. Um, Which we move around a lot. And the sound, and yes. the sound booth and a, light, a sound and light booth that kind of disappears where the light person can, get, can see everything they need to see and see the audience. And so it, a lot, it's a really cool room. It's a great, the best, I can't think of a better space around to do a show. We don't have showcases in the area, and you've worked with some very good performers over the years, haven't you? Yeah, a lot. And a lot that went on to do some pretty amazing things that... Who knew? Mm-hmm. You know, and a lot of good, really good people that just decided one day to not do it anymore. So mm-hmm. uh, a lot of people came through those doors, mm-hmm. and some I'm really proud of today, and some. I have mean, the biggest story to this. I mean, the, the biggest story was Alicia Moore, probably from Odette's. From our, you know, I had it, we had, we did a showcase night one night. George Sinkler and I, and we had a. Uh, benefit for our bartender that had throat cancer mm-hmm. and judy said can my daughter sing in the show and i said well not really we're full mm-hmm. <laughs> but we allowed room for one more i said i'll i'll, I'll let you squeeze her in mm-hmm. anyway four months later she was a major star there changed you. her name to pink but uh ah. but that um <laughs> but that's that's one of many but that's that's my biggest high profile story although i didn't have anything to do with her being famous uh, i wish i did <laughs> Uh, but I had a lot of other people that went on to do really great things. One, there were like one of my favorite stories was a young boy that sang in one of my showcases, and my friend that was a casting agent for Disney just happened to come to that showcase. He signed him up before he left the building, oh. and I would get postcards nine months later from Tokyo, from Disney in Tokyo, saying I'm on tour here. And I like that just like blew me away. That I love knowing that somehow the showcase thing at Odette's or in one of my cabarets somehow gave somebody the 
the boost. A boost. And now you're getting ready to do that with... Well, and Chaslin, as when I had the showcases, because even after Odette's closed, I still continue to do showcases, and Chaslin did a, quite a few of the showcases, and now this is the first time Chaslin's going to do her own show. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, now, let me ask you, Chaslin. Chaslin, you have been sitting here <laughs> silently... You know, listening to everything that Bob has said, and I know this must be very exciting for you that you've got your own debut, your solo debut. Can you tell us about yourself? How did you get into singing? I think I could sing before I could talk. My first toy that my mom got me was a little Fisher Price um, recorder and microphone, and I called it my on. And, um, <laughs> Ever since then, I grew up, and it was extracurricular activities, chorus, and then magicals and camarada and, you know. High school musicals? Pretty much, yeah, district and county chorus. And then I graduated college, and then now I'm singing with Bob. (laughs) Did you major in music in college? Didn't, science major. Ah, well. Same thing, kind of. You use that in everyday life, (laughs) just like algebra. Well, how did you meet Bob? I met Bob uh, through my mom. Uh, My mom was catering at the time for another um, musician in Bucks County who uh, is very well-known, Liz Dufour. And um, she had a party my mom catered when she lived in Milltown, New Jersey, and Bob was playing at the event. So I was about nine then, and uh, I think the first song I sang was... Nine? Well, Bob, (laughs) you're Methuselah, is that it? (laughs) I was thinking it was about 10 years ago, but it's actually almost 20 years ago. And the first song that I sang with him was On My Own from Les Mis. And he looked a lot different then. So did I. (laughs) We're a lot younger. (laughs) Bob is, like, giving us the look. I just remembered that. I forgot all about that. I know. I should have kept it at 10 years. (laughs) Yes. You're only 19 now. We know that. Yes. Now, um, so that's how you met Bob. That's how you met him, but how did you start singing with him? So from nine until about my 20s, we uh, lost touch with Bob. And then I moved to New Hope in about 2010. And at my 21st birthday, I had it at Bowman's Tavern. And we reconnected there. Oh, very nice. Yeah. How nice that you went up when he was playing. Yes. I was like, do you remember me? He's like, no. No. (laughs) (laughs) No. Oh, God. Well, uh, I mean, your show... Are you excited about this? I am. I mean, I'm excited. It's always an honor to to sing with Bob. And um, I'm anxious, but I am really looking forward to it. It's hard work. and Okay. Well, I have heard you sing, seen you sing on YouTube. You know, obviously yes. people in the audience have taken footage, and you have a lovely voice. Thank you. You have a lovely voice. Now, your show is being promoted as your first solo cabaret debut, But you've got a few guest artists singing with you. Yes, I do. They're also pretty well-known and have been singing with Bob for quite some time. Uh, Louisa Haggerty and uh, Ashley Mm -hmm. Wayne Barlow. I know Louisa very well. And everyone knows Ashley Wayne Barlow very well. Of course. Of course, he performed at our gala, our opening gala. Yes. And um, we're all old friends, and my friend Trish Silvestri is also going to be singing in the show as well. Is she a local person? Philadelphia. She Philadelphia. She's an entertainment enough. DJ. She's an entertainer. Her whole life is music, so Excellent. she's great. Excellent. Now, um, I know I want to put you out of your misery because you look terrified <laughs> yeah. of, of me right now. <laughs> so why don't we get you more where you are more comfortable, which is at the piano with Bob, and uh, let our listeners get a sneak preview. Is that okay, Bob? Yes, he says. Yes. Uh, Let our listeners get a sneak preview of uh, what you're going to be doing this coming Saturday. So would you two do the honors? Absolutely. Yeah. Before my eyes, I saw my heart. It 
Vegan. And I'm Chaslyn Sweetwood. Please join us this Saturday, August 27th at the Bucks, Bucks County, County Cabaret. Cabaret. <laughs> and I'm Tom Orr. And I'm Jennifer Orr. And we will be right back with more from Chaslyn Sweetwood and Bob Egan, as well as the hilarious Chris Rich from Comedy Central, <laughs> on the second half of the Bucks County Cabaret Show. Hey, and don't forget our sponsor, Miss Marsha. At www.singmarsha.com, yes, Ellie Goose. <laughs> the Bucks County Cabaret is located at the Roadway Inn and Suites in New Hope, Pennsylvania. www.bucksCountyCabaret.com. <laughs> If you're looking for an experienced craftsman for home repair and construction work in central New Jersey and eastern PA, look no further than Darren Kosiorek. Based in Ringo's, New Jersey for 30 years, this hardworking Polish immigrant does everything from roofing and siding installation to creating original furniture. Darren's motto is, I love my job and you'll love my work. So call for a free estimate at 609-851-5398. Casiora Home Repair and Construction, your best bet for quality work at a great price. You only get one chance to make a big first impression. That's why Green Birdie Productions offers a free edit after client review on every high-definition video we create. We have a spacious green screen special effects studio and an Emmy Award-winning staff. Our standards are high. Maybe that's why our customers keep coming back. Green Birdie Productions. Compelling video, competitive price. 
It's all authentic comfort food at Bitter Bob's in New Hope. Bob serves mouth-watering barbecued pork and chicken dishes, signature sloppy sandwiches, homemade cornbread, macaroni and cheese and collard greens, all the great southern dishes you crave for. Bob serves weekend brunch, lunch, and dinner, BYOB, with an outside patio that is dog-friendly, and he has a kid's menu. Great desserts, too. And Bob can cater any event, big or small. Tell the waitstaff you heard this commercial and get 10% off. Bitter Bob's in New Hope, PA. Authentic comfort food for your family. Hey, it's Laura Mangone from Food for Thought. Would you like us to talk about your recipes on the air? Send them to laura at chamberswalk.com and we can talk about them, give you our points of view, maybe even share some improvements. Join us, Food for Thought. We're back for the second half of the Bucks County Cabaret Show, and here is another number from Chaslin Sweetwood, accompanied by Bob Egan. Chaslin is making her long-anticipated solo debut this Saturday night at the Bucks County Cabaret.
And that was Chaslin Sweetwood with Bob Egan on the piano. Chaslin appearing this Saturday at the Bucks County Cabaret for her solo debut. And I'm back with uh, my lovely wife, Jennifer, who is our co-host at the Bucks County Cabaret. And wasn't that a great inter- interview with Chaslin and Bob Egan? It was a gr- wonderful interview, especially how Bob mentioned how just special that room happens to be. And I can just remember a particular event that oh. occurred at that room about five years ago. Oh, is, oh, I see. You're referring to the time that I lost my senses and proposed to you in front of a, f- a whole house full of people? Yeah, my is family, that all of our friends. Is that, your, is that what you're talking to? Well, guess what, <laughs> honey? I have a little surprise for you because we're going to play a clip of that moment for you right now. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Here you go. Oh, jeez. My defenses are down, I might as well surrender for the battle, let me won, but I must confess that I like it, so there's nothing to be done, yes, I must confess You better go lasso her right now. Still saying hell yeah four years later, oh. honey. <laughs> four years, September first. It it's coming up. Coming up soon, and that was her whole family whooping it up down front. I met Jennifer uh, at the Actors Net in Bucks County. We were both doing Cyrano de Bergerac. She has a long history in theater, also, and. Uh, Speaking of someone with a long history in theater, I'm not inferring that she's as the same age as me, <laughs> but we did go back as far as the old dinner theaters in Philadelphia, and this is an interview we did with her, uh, with Rob Bell. So, Rob, we're bringing you back for this sec- section. Uh, this is an interview we did with Chris Rich from Comedy Central, who's appearing next Friday night. Can't uh, wait for this one. Either. This is a, two great shows next weekend, and Chris is just going to be so funny and amazing. I know her from way back. You're going to really enjoy her one-woman show uh, this Friday. She's hysterical. So uh, here we are, Rob and I, listening to Chris Rich at the PANJ Studios. Oh, my gosh. Uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's funny how it all started out. And uh, it, actually, this is how I met Tom Orr as well. Uh, we were both in prison. And uh, <laughs> in the women's section, oh, you know, on. you had to take courses. <laughs> they, they do that. They, they, they try to uh, educate you. And uh, Tom got to all the drama courses before I did. <laughs> you know, the only thing left was uh, stand-up comedy. <laughs> and all the shiv-making classes were taken. <laughs> you know, so I was like, fine. So it was really odd. It was just what was open, you know, and I went into it, and uh, me and Tom would share notes later on, you know, after the guards would go by. (laughs) And really that, uh, maybe because we were so isolated and there was nothing else to focus on that we got into into that area. So, yeah, it was just just by chance, just by sheer luck. (laughs) Uh, Tell Rob how you found out about the Bucks County Cabaret. (laughs) Oh, I was so lucky to be invited to the opening night and so upset that I couldn't attend. Tom or knows me. You know what a small world it is, you know, the performing world, you know, in, in, in the tri-state area. And he sent me an invitation for the opening night, and all I heard was great stuff about it, and I really wanted to go. So I stayed in touch. He said, well, another time you'll come, another time. And... 
then it turned out that I got this wonderful show on Broadway. I was invited to do my one-woman show. And I thought, wow, where could I perform around here? Where could I do a preview? All I had to do was send one Facebook message to Tom Orr. And what a wonderful thing for a performer. He jumped right on it, got right back to me, said, give me some dates. I'll be happy to do it. It's perfect for our venue. And I just can't wait to do it. Everyone raves about the place. It's the intimate. It's the most necessary venue that we can possibly have in this area, in any area. We all need it. We all need to work out our things. One of the most heartbreaking things for me when I heard that venues like this in Philadelphia were all closing. You know, all the little jazz places, all the places where you could work out material like everybody needs to do. No, suddenly they were gaps. Suddenly they were clothing stores. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's really hard to get an attentive audience. I tried. I would go to the gap. You know, I would open the (laughs) curtains up in the girls' room and start working on material. No, it just doesn't work. And this was such a gift, not only to me, but everybody. And Tom said, yes, you're in. Tell me what you need. So it was just through people like Tom that know how to stay in touch with other performers and support them, which is so rare. And there's nothing better, I'm sure you understand, than having another performer design and run a space. Every comedian knows, all you have to do is say to them, the guy that books, that runs this place, that books it, used to be a comic or is a comic. I'm there. <laughs> Because they know what the audience wants. They know how to present it. And absolutely, all I, I, you know, the space is wonderful because Tom knows what to do to make everybody look great and to make the audience have the best possible experience. Gosh. It's, it's, it's a complete gift to me to be working there. I pray. In fact, I wanted to add the reason I know Tom, I come from this crazy background for a comedian that I did years of musical comedy. Years and years and years. Uh, in fact, I did Oklahoma so many times, I qualified for Farm Aid. Yeehaw! <laughs> which, believe it or not, has been a big help. <laughs> and it made me able to afford being a stand up comic with that coming in. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a great training, great background. And of course, everyone knows Tom is wonderful. So, it's been a real, varied avenue that's gotten me into one person show stand up comedy which are really two different sets of muscles but thank god i had all that background and knew people like tom that i could look up to and learn from because you know you only learn from the people you perform with and the level that they're they are at and people like tom oh this area is so full of incredibly talented people that for some reason or other are cheating broadway (laughs) because maybe unlike some of the people in new york they have a human soul they have a conscience (laughs) they have a heart and their home taking care of family being married being committed you know nothing against new yorkers they're wonderful people but for different reasons we're just as good we're just as strong but we have different priorities so we travel back and forth you know but i think that kind of thing enriches your performance if you know how to care about people if you have a variation in your life outside of where's the next audition you know and who's the next homeless person i can knock over to get a new pair of shoes um, <laughs> i think that that makes you a such a, a richer performer You know, and it's a connection with your audience where you're not so removed that you're like, I am a performer and this is all I do. And aren't you lucky to be seeing me? Now I'm doing John Lovitz. (laughs) But when you are, I'm living in Bucks County. I know what these people are like. You know, I'm in Yardley, but God knows I'm, I'm not in the borough. I'm in hardly Yardley. You know, they make us write that on the address. Isn't that sad? But, you know, we're in, the, we're in the slums, the slums of Yardley. But I love it. It's great. I'm really South Sesame Place. That's no. really what I am. I am South Sesame Street. And a big bird comes to my feeders, actually. Can I brag? Yeah. And I throw them out. I say, get out of here, you bum. You got three hots in a cot. Leave it for the other birds. But uh, uh, just a great place to live. Uh-huh. You know, and now to have venues like the Bucks County Cabaret, You know, who needs it? This is great. I can grow here. I can do what I want. I can have a perfect audience because everyone knows, Bucks County people, 
you know, like Philly, these are discerning audiences. I'm sorry, they're just as good as New York City audiences. I will say it. You can arrest me. Better, right? better. But they are. They're very, very astute. They will sit there and listen. They know how to show respect. They know what a live audience should be doing, what what you need, how rewarding it is. You don't have to convince them to come out. You know, you don't need half price tickets and free beers. They're there. You know, uh, when I work on, I had such a moment when I was working on my one person show. I had a five minute presentation I was doing at a storytelling venue and it was, it was the funniest night. I have to tell you, I go there, I'm trying to do this, I'm trying to get it down, right? I'm trying to put this one person show together. Of course, when I go, the lights go out because there's a tornado. There's all windows behind me and it's completely dark. There's like lightning, lightning was our lighting, right? And the gentleman in charge said, all right, I'm going to stop the show. There's no power. The restaurant can't serve anymore because it's illegal. There's no refrigeration. What do you people want? What? What Do you want to go home? Um, t- how gratifying is this? I stood there and I heard the chant starting from the back of the room. And I thought they were going to say, shut it down. No. <laughs> they were chanting stories, stories. We want to hear the stories. They wanted to hear me. Nice. I couldn't believe it. So I stood there in the dark, which, believe me, was very flattering. So it was kind of luck. And I told my, my section, you know, and you could hear a pin drop. But all by way of saying, these are the audiences we have around here, we have in Bucks County, that are so eager for us to share what we're writing, what we're doing. That was such a gratifying night. I didn't know what to expect. I thought, oh, it's raining. They're going to want to go home. I drove all the way out here. Can you imagine hearing that? People pounding the table. I felt like I was back in prison. (laughs) They had utensils in their hands, pounding the tables. And I was like, do I know you? Are you from... But... (laughs) It was just that's when I realized how lucky I am that I moved that I didn't end up in New York City, but I am in the right spot. I have places like Bucks County Cabaret where I can feel completely free to bring things because people are so eager to listen. Yeah, but we're really blessed around here. We're really blessed. We are. That was Chris Rich appearing this Friday at the Bucks County Cabaret www.buckscountycabaret.com Before that we heard from Chaslin Sweetwood and they're going to fill out our August schedule. Honey, we're going to do September and let the people know what's going on in in September. We are jam-packed in September. First show in September is our Back to School Night, which is our regular first Friday review featuring eight great singers singers who's going to be there this time. Uh, This month, or or I should say in September, we feature Kathy Lee Bars, Mickey Sharp, Jerry Wachinski, Jan Baldwin, Mark Applegate, and everyone's favorite teacher, Mr. Steve Lobis. That's right, back to school night. Next, after that, Sydney Burgoyne, Friday, September 9th and 10th. Now, Sydney is coming down from New York, and if you want to get a ticket, get it right away because it's almost sold out both nights. So call us up right away, 609 510 7784. After that, Friday, September the 16th, right, straight from the UK, we have Susie G in the Patsy Cline tribute. And she sounds amazingly like Patsy Cline. She grew up in Scotland <laughs> listening to Patsy. After that, Avi Wisnia, our award winning singer songwriter from Bucks County, who appears with us regularly. Don't miss him. Every show is new and amazing. After that, honey? And then Friday and Saturday, that's September 23rd and 24th, Molasses, Molasses Creek. Molasses Creek, that's Award right. Award winners from Garrison Keeler's Prairie Home Companion. I cannot wait for this group. They're going to rock the house and totally we bring it down. We can't overestimate that you... We can't underestimate. We can't <laughs> tell you enough to buy a ticket for Molasses Creek. And that's what's coming on September at the the Bucks County Cabaret. And that wraps up this week's edition of the Bucks County Cabaret Show. I'd like to thank Rob Bell at PANJ Radio, our guests, Chaslin Sweetwood, Bob Egan, 
Chris Rich, as well as our crack team at the Bucks County Cabaret, John Bell, Megan Hill, and today's co-host, Jennifer Orr. And uh, don't forget that you can hear this episode on panjradio.com every night this week at 9 p.m. The Bucks County Cabaret is located at the Roadway Inn and Suites in New Hope, Pennsylvania. www.buckscountycabaret.com Cabaret.com. Cabaret.com.